Alrighty, folks. Plasma 6.1 has finally arrived in Tumbleweed. It's uh, what, roughly four days after it was released. Finally got through the automated testing and it has hit my computer. I'm not running any special repos. It's just there. So right now, KDE Plasma version 6.1.0, Frameworks 6.3.0, QT version 6.7.1, Running kernel version 6.9.5 hyphen 1. I am running under Wayland. I do have an AMD graphics card. We're going to get to NVIDIA in a minute. And you can see my hardware here. See that? That's one of the things. I'm shaking the mouse around and it showed me where it was. There it is. That's one of the things in 6.1. So. I am going to be reading from over here. Plasma 6 hit its stride with version 6.1. We're going to skip some of this. In this release, you'll find features that go far and above and beyond subtle changes to themes and tweaks to animations. Now, this says, this is uh, KDE.org announcements, Plasma 6.1.0. said that due to unforeseen circumstances, we have been unable to ship the new wallpaper. Let me just bring this up. Now you can read along. Due to unforeseen circumstances, we are unable to ship the new wallpaper reef with this version of Plasma. However, there will be a new wallpaper coming soon in the next 6.2 version. If you can't wait, download it here. And here it is. This is the reef wallpaper. Somebody's going to have to explain to me why they couldn't release a wallpaper it's an image right it's just an image right click set image i don't understand what unforeseen circumstances would keep you from shipping a picture unless they're just haven't completely made sure there's no copyright involved but i don't get it other than that i don't know to me that sounds a little strange so access the, the new, access remote Plasma desktop. One of the more spectacular and useful features added in Plasma 6.1 is you can now start a remote desktop directly from the system settings app. So I'm gonna, this is their video. I'm gonna see this. Going into system settings, search RDP. Enable. Okay. Or KRDC. Okay, so it's a proper remote connection. Um, theoretically, without firewall issues, I could connect to my mom's computer across town and fix it for her. Theoretically. Okay, I've seen enough. So that is that is actually pretty cool. RDP being part of the desktop itself. Begs the question, what can possibly go wrong, right? So, yeah, just make sure if you're not using that, that it stays disabled. It looks to me like it's disabled by default, so that's a good thing. All right, we'll continue on. Customization made more visual. We're going to look at this little video that they have. Okay, it all looks good. I'm going to uh, actually play around with this a little bit. Show you something else that I haven't been able to do that I can now. I have a, I have a split. I have two monitors, and I've never been able to mount right to there. I've never been able to do that. I can do it on this side all along, real easy. Just go to that edge, but it would never find this edge over here. Put my window up right here. 
So I don't know if that's six six or six point one. I don't think I tried it in just six. But that's very cool. Really glad that's able to work now. So I'm going to go into edit mode on my actual computer. This is not a virtual machine. And what can I do from here? Add widgets, add panels, desktop, global themes, display configuration, panel desktop management, exit edit mode, panel. Did you go way over there? When I'm working on this screen, why did you go over there? Hmm. Uh -huh. They're still working on it, I reckon. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll try it again. Enter, edit. Uh, add widget. Okay, that bobbed up the right one. Analog clock. Just because it's easy. And I don't have to hold it to get the options. That's a good thing. Figure. Cancel. Go back to that. Okay. Show seconds, show time zone. Hit OK. Yeah. Remove. Um, definitely a lot cleaner. I love how everything moves out of the way when you're getting stuff. <laughs> That's an option too. Let's just go ahead and look at that. Since I keep accidentally activating it. We're going to go into here. I think it's under mouse. No, it's not either. I think it's under accessibility. Yep, shake cursor. And right here, enable. You can change enable, disable, and check it. And you can change how large it gets when you're trying to find it. Yep, definitely large enough to find there. So I'm actually going to disable that, I think. No, actually, maybe not. Might help in my videos. Although, in my videos, I usually have that set. So, either way, I'll probably leave it. We'll leave it for now. And while I was looking at this right before I started recording, I went to accessibility to find shake cursor. And I do notice screen reader. Enable screen reader and you have to install Orca screen reader. I know that one time this was having issues with Wayland session. I wonder if it works now. So activation gestures, mouse navigation, keyboard filters, modifier keys, bell. Alrighty. Alright, so that's the edit mode. Pretty cool. Persistent apps. Now this is this one's this one is pretty cool. When you have and I can't show it to you without all right. Hold on. Okay. I actually don't have a virtual machine of Tumbleweed installed right now, so I'm just gonna show it to you on their little video. And we're gonna go ahead and look at this. So if you if you have Windows opened up and you shut the machine down, turn the machine off, it will fire back up with the windows that you had. Not necessarily where you had them. That's a work in progress. So you might have had one that was full screen and one that wasn't. They would probably both pop up not full screen. So it is a work in progress. Now, neither one of those in this demonstration video was full screen, but, and that's just what I've read. I'm not 100% sure on it, but I have read that the work in progress is to actually, they're still working on putting the windows where you had them and full screen or not. That is my understanding. Now you can sync your keyboard's colored LEDs and you know, this is this is your mileage may vary kind of thing. It depends on your keyboard, obviously. Please note this feature will not work on unsupported keyboards, obviously. But if your keyboard is supported, you'll be able to sync the colors monitor. 
Also, again, pretty cool. Match the accent color on your desktop. Very cool. I wonder how large or small that supported list is. And we have a link here. We do not have a link. Looking for a link. There is no link for what is supported. So that and all of this rest of this. We have simplified the choices you see when you try to exit Plasma by reducing the number of confusing options. For example, when you press shutdown, Plasma will only list shutdown and cancel, not every single power option. I approve of this. You can also get rid of the confirmation completely, thanks to somebody on my YouTube channel saying, hey dummy, you can, dis you can disable that. And I've been using Plasma for decades and didn't know that. Um, I go to search. I can't remember where it is or what it's even called. So I'm going to go to search and type in confirmation. Go to desktop session right here. Log out screen. That's it. If you uncheck that log out screen and you come down here and you hit restart or shut down, that's it. It's doing it. There is no confirmation. And that's how I have it set right now, so I'm not going to do it. Screen locking gives you the option of configuring it to behave like a traditional screensaver, as you can choose it not to ask for your password to unlock it. Interesting. So that would be under lock. Screen locking. Uh, ever change that. Delay before password, never require password. So what is my keyboard shortcut? Meta L, Meta capital L. I wonder if my re recording will continue to record. Well, that didn't work. I gotta come out of that. Button. Not going right straight in, so oh, wait a minute. Alrighty, so that is basically the screensaver, I guess. And I set it to not require a password when I when I come back, so it should just come right back and it short did. Yeah, I can live with that. That's actually kind of cool. I never lock my computer. I would want, I think I would want something on the screen moving, which, no, that's stupid because when I don't, the way I have it set now, I don't have it moving. But this, the screens do turn off after 20 minutes or so, so there is that. And I'm sure it probably still will. So this actually, I could do that. I might leave that, but I'm not going to leave it for that long. We're going to go with, uh, I'm going to put it on five minutes and see how I like this. Alrighty. Two visual accessibility changes make it easier to use the cursor, the screen shake, or the cursor shake that I've already showed you several times by accident mostly. Edge barrier is useful if you have multi monitor set up. There it is. And want to access thing on the very edge of your monitor. There it is. That's, that's exactly correct. It is. So that is a 6.1 option. I love it. Thank you very much. It's always been irritating. Very irritating. Um, the barrier, quote unquote, is a sticky area for your cursor near the edges between screens. Makes it easier to click on things if that is what you want to do rather than having the cursor scooting across to the next display. Absolutely. Kudos. Outstanding. Two major Wayland breakthroughs will greatly improve your Plasma experience. Explicit Sync. Everybody on everything has been talking about Explicit Sync to make NVIDIA users happier. And I have not tested this yet. This machine is not NVIDIA, but that one is. That old potato there is NVIDIA, so I'm going to try it out on that. I just haven't yet. 
and triple buffering support in Wayland makes animations and screen rendering smoother. Awesome. Definitely awesome. I have heard from some content creators that this is going to make KDE Plasma animations better than they've ever been. Possibly true. What this actually does is put Wayland on par with X because X already had triple buffering. Now, I'm, in my experience, Wayland is better than X. It is smoother than X. It is more efficient than X. So if you have triple buffering in both of them, theoretically, Wayland could be a little better. But I'm not testing that. At least I'm not. I haven't yet as far as actual test numbers goes. But what I've seen so far, this looks pretty darn good. It is absolutely smooth. And they have a big long list of, of change log. I will put this announcement into the description of this video and in the show notes on the podcast so that you can click on, on this announcement. You, and then if you want to go see the full change log, all you have to do is click on this. It is a very long change log. It is quite long yeah it is quite long so there's a lot here if you want to read the absolute details this is pretty much everything that they've fixed and updated and reverted etc etc so if you want to see that big long list you, you can click there I, i'm not going to read that very long list in this video but now, the way that I updated to 6.1 is I have a wired connection. So I did Control Alt F1. And then once I was in TTY, I logged in, username and password. And then I just did sudo, uh, sudo zippered up. That's all I did. When it was done, I sudo reboot. Came right up. Everything's working great. Absolutely smooth as silk. If you have a wireless connection, I recommend that you watch this video that I'm going to post over my head here somewhere that tells how to how to upgrade from the KDE Plasma 5 series, 5 what was it, 27 to KDE 6, the, the first original update. I recommend doing that anytime that you're updating the plasma the kde plasma the actual desktop environment because if it stops responding and you're using that desktop environment to do the update well your update just stopped responding too so you can go into you can do sudo zipper up hyphen hyphen download only i think is what it is but it's in this video if you want to see that in action and that will update you just fine and dandy without any problems when you reboot you'll reboot into your session into your new plasma 6 session but if you haven't done it yet by all means i say go for it it's smooth as silk and it's supposed to be smooth as silk on nvidia provided that you have the nvidia driver that supports it and i think that might still be beta I could be wrong on that, but I think it is. So between the NVIDIA beta for explicit sync, KDE Plasma with explicit sync, you get both of those together, you should have a rock solid experience even on NVIDIA with Linux from that point on. And the old test machine is fixed to get fired up for the first time in a while. I'm going to update it, get it going, and check and see if I've got which NVIDIA drivers I've got on it. But I'm going to check it out. That's all for this video. And as always, until next time, thank you so much for watching.